Dolly Parton has found a way to appeal to people of all different backgrounds, political views, and musical preferences, and a lot of that comes from her charming and winning roles as an actress. Here are some of Dolly Parton's best movie and TV appearances. 9 to 5 is a female empowerment comedy cult classic that still holds resonance in today's conversation about gender politics in the workplace. A young Dolly Parton made her film debut and proved her acting chops along with her singing talents in this role. She was nominated for an Oscar for Best Original Song for 9 to 5 in 1981, and she also received her first three Golden Globe nominations for Best Actress, Best Song, and New Star of the Year. Dolly plays a secretary named Dora Lee, who endures harassment from her boss, Mr. Hart. She and fellow female co-workers, Judy, played by Jane Fonda, and Violet, played by Lily Tomlin, get together one night over drinks and spin revenge fantasies about their boss. Pretty soon, the trio are putting their ideas into action, and the hijinks lead to kidnapping as they take over the office in his name. What the hell is going on? Who authorized all this? You did, Mr. Hart. It's uh, your signature. Oh, that's very funny. There was talk of a sequel for decades, but according to Entertainment Weekly, that was officially scrapped in 2019. That doesn't stop Dolly, Jane, and Lily from still making appearances together once in a while, like at the 2019 Primetime Emmys, where they received a standing ovation. Starring alongside Burt Reynolds in this musical comedy based on a Broadway play of the same name, Dolly Parton shines as singer-actress in The Best Little Whorehouse in Texas, playing Mona, a madam of a local brothel. Believe it or not, the story is based on a real place, the Texas Chicken Ranch in LaGrange, Texas, which closed in 1973. The Chicken Ranch had been in operation since 1918, and during the Great Depression, the madam in charge at the time would take chickens as payment, according to Wide Open Country. Truth is truly stranger than fiction. In the film, Burt Reynolds plays local sheriff Ed Earl Dodd, who fights to keep the brothel open after a reporter questions its legality. Dolly insisted on singing some of her original songs in the film, including a rendition of her hit song, I Will Always Love You. She and Reynolds also sang the famous duet, Sneakin' Around. Parton received a Golden Globe nomination for Best Actress in a Motion Picture, Comedy or Musical in 1983. Parton certainly gets paired with some strange love interests. In Rhinestone, Parton plays Jake Farris, whose mission is to make New York cab driver Nick, played by Sylvester Stallone, into a country singer overnight in order to nab a contract with a club manager. The film was based on the hit Glenn Campbell song, Rhinestone Cowboy. The result was, well, kind of embarrassing, especially for Stallone, who actually sings, and it's not a hidden talent of his, if you were wondering. He doesn't even look like he enjoys singing on screen, which makes the performance all the more agonizing. Dolly, though, is all charm and smiles, of course. Stallone turned down lead roles in Romancing the Stone and Beverly Hills Cop to make Rhinestone, and it's no secret that he regretted his choice. Of course, Dolly sings. She even garnered two top 10 country singles for her songs Tennessee Homesick Blues and God Won't Get You. The film wasn't exactly a success. It even got a few Razzie Award nominations, including Razzie wins for Worst Actor and Worst Original Song for Dolly's Drinkenstein. We can go ahead and blame that one on Stallone, too, who drunkenly groans through the number. But True Blue Dolly fans enjoy the film for its musical performances and fun, campy acting. Dolly stars in the sweet fairy tale A Smoky Mountain Christmas as country music star Lorna Davis, who finds refuge from her chaotic life in Los Angeles in the, yep, you guessed it, Smoky Mountains, at a friend's cabin right around, right you are, Christmas. She then runs into some strange and lovable characters, including a witch and seven seriously adorable orphan children on her journey. 
Her first made-for-TV Christmas film was, and still is, a wholesome classic tradition for many Dolly fans during the holidays. Does this story sound familiar? That's because Dolly basically becomes the Smoky Mountains version of Snow White with the children acting as her seven dwarves. The witch tries to poison Lorna with an apple pie. But all's well that ends well in this Christmas gem. Did we mention there's also a lot of singing? Dolly performs nearly a dozen Christmas tunes, including the classic Here Comes Santa Claus and her own song, Country Memories. If Hallmark Channel had been around in 1986, this would have definitely been on it. A classic film and a certified tearjerker, Steel Magnolias has an all-star cast, including Dolly Parton as hairstylist and beauty shop owner Truvy Jones. Based on the book and play by Robert Harling, the story touches on some very dark family topics, including diabetic pregnancy. Shelby, played by a young Julia Roberts, decides to get pregnant despite the life-and-death medical risks involved with her type 1 diabetes diagnosis. According to The Atlantic, the touching storyline is based on Harling's sister's experience with the disease, which is possibly why it comes across as so real and personable. Over the course of the film, Shelby decides to go against the medical advice she receives to become a mom, and the film's cast of close-knit women find ways to support her in her journey, even if they don't all agree with it. Steel Magnolias has been praised as a celebration of women. It is rare for a film's stars to be all women, while the male characters take a back seat. Dolly's character Truvy was created for Harling's friend, Margot Martindale, who played the character off-Broadway. Apparently, the film's director, Herb Ross, was not a huge fan of Parton. The cast of ladies have discussed Ross years later, divulging that he was not only harsh on Roberts, but said to Dolly, quote, Why don't you take some acting lessons? To which Sally Field exclaimed, quote, You don't say that to Dolly Parton. To this day, the film's cult audience couldn't imagine the movie without her. This one is almost like watching a warped B-movie set to music. The made-for-television film, co-starring Gary Busey of all people, features Dolly as an aspiring country singer, Theola Rayfield, who isn't having the best luck with her career. While singing in nightclubs on the road, she meets Justice Parker, that's Busey, the owner of a Texas club, and they fall in love. But it turns out that Justice is an alcoholic with mental health issues who physically abuses Theola. When he's murdered, she becomes one of the suspects. Wild Texas Wind gets a lot of criticism for not handling domestic violence the right way, but it generally received positive reviews. Plus, it co-stars Willie Nelson, so it has that going for it. A sequel and studio album were both discussed, but neither ever materialized. Another oddball film featuring an unexpected love interest for Dolly is Straight Talk. This time, her paramour is played by James Woods, while Dolly plays a lovable Southern failed dance instructor named Shirley, who leaves her boyfriend and moves to Chicago to start anew as a modern career woman. Shirley quickly finds herself working for a sleeper hit psychiatric radio show and becomes an accidental radio psychologist. It's also a romantic musical comedy. Sounds strange? It is. But it's worth it to see Parton's charismatic performance. She was easily hailed as the best part of the film, and quite possibly its only saving grace, as Woods was savaged by critics. Empire wrote that Woods, quote, looks terrible and is less happily employed with quite the most excruciatingly corny lines of his career. Ouch. The late great critic Roger Ebert gave Straight Talk only two stars, but while he panned the film in general, he did single out Dolly for praise. Now there's a critic who knew what he was talking about. In this light-hearted, feel-good story, Dolly plays a narcissistic singer named Ruby Diamond, who dies suddenly by crashing her car after avoiding a deer on a country road. Ruby enters heaven and discovers that because she was willing to risk her life for a deer, she has a chance to stick around. However, she has to pay her dues first. Angel in charge, Peter, tasks Ruby with helping a dysfunctional family come together 
after the death of the matriarch in time for Christmas. Ruby accepts the challenge and becomes the family's new nanny, even singing and playing guitar for the forlorn youngins. Dolly composed original songs for Unlikely Angel with help from Velton Ray Bunch. The film follows the classic Christmas Carol tropes, with Parton essentially playing Ebenezer Scrooge, and even has a little sound of music thrown in because why not? Hey, they said it was unlikely. In Blue Valley Songbird, a made-for-television flick that aired on Lifetime, Dolly plays Nashville singer Leanna Taylor, who channels music as a kind of therapeutic method in order to face her troubled childhood. Parton was inspired to make the movie after writing the song Blue Valley Songbird. According to her official website, Dolly said, As soon as I wrote the song, I had full intentions of making a movie from it. In my mind, I thought, this is like a screenplay. Dolly executive produced the film and was very involved throughout the process. She said, I felt it was very important to find Southern people to write this script. The writers we chose were both from the South, so they had an understanding of it. Dolly Parton paired up with fellow powerhouse performer Queen Latifah for this film, which celebrates the church choir with a lively rock gospel musical. Latifah plays Vi Rose Hill, opposite Parton as Gigi Sparrow, two friendly rivals in a church choir. A young Kiki Palmer is cast as the choir's young starlet and Queen Latifah's daughter, Olivia. Parton and Latifah enjoy playing off of each other as polar opposites. Vi Rose is pious, humble, and God-fearing, whereas Gigi is loud, gaudy, and audacious. Who gives rat's ass if I've had a few little nips and tucks? God didn't make plastic surgeons so they could starve. Parton wrote and performed two new original songs for the film, though most of the music is dominated by covers of well-known favorites from various genres. The film's raucous finale is a glee-like mashup of songs by Usher, Sly Stone, and Stevie Wonder, among others. While some critics pan joyful noise for being embarrassingly cheesy, others lovingly refer to it as the unofficial Sister Act 3. Everyone loves a good Christmas movie, especially if it stars a country music legend who sings Christmas songs about her own life. Yes, it's true. Christmas of Many Colors, Circle of Love is a Dolly Parton biopic and acts as a sequel to her film, Coat of Many Colors. The story focuses on Dolly's childhood growing up poor in the Smoky Mountains. Dolly narrates, giving the audience some background as the story unfolds, and of course her songs supply the musical backdrop. Deeply personal songs like Nickels and Dimes make for a heartfelt experience, while Ricky Schroeder and Jennifer Nettles give moving performances as Dolly's parents. It's safe to say that making Christmas of Many Colors Circle of Love was a true labor of love for Dolly. Maybe the most unusual appearance Dolly Parton has ever made in a movie is the Netflix film Dumplin', because technically, she doesn't actually appear in it. However, she was the driving force and guiding light behind the film. And though Dolly herself doesn't show up on screen, her music is used throughout, especially in some key sequences, featuring drag queens performing Dolly hits in a burlesque medley. The story follows teen Willa Dean Dixon, played by Danielle McDonald, whose mother, played by Jennifer Aniston, is a former pageant queen in small-town Texas. When Mom puts on a pageant, Willa Dean decides to enter as a protest against the imposition of mainstream beauty standards, with the Dolly impersonators providing full support. Screenwriter Kristen Hahn, who adapted the story from the best-selling young adult novel by Julie Murphy, said about Dolly, she ended up being, essentially, a fairy godmother to the movie. Dolly's manager was a fan of the script and approached Dolly enthusiastically about the project. It turned out that Dolly had a copy of the book already sitting on her bookshelf. So not only did Dolly help the film get made, but she paired up with Linda Perry to curate the soundtrack, which features original versions of Dolly classics Dumb Blonde and Jolene. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more grunge videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell 
so you don't miss a single one.